Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a flip cup pour. I had uh, some paint left over uh, and they're actually colours that I would never ordinarily choose but I thought we could give them a go. So these two basically are complementary colours so I'm a little bit nervous to put them together because usually these two would make um, that, that start to brown. So I'm basically going to be doing the blue, a white, an orange and a metallic gold. I'm going to be lay layering them up in my cup that way. And these two have a thinner consistency. No, actually these two have a thinner consistency and these are slightly thicker. So it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Before we begin, I just wanted to say thank you for visiting my channel. I really do appreciate it. And please, if you're enjoying what you, you know, are watching what I'm sharing, please like, subscribe, or comment I you know I enjoy getting to know the people who follow me so please definitely comment uh, and like I say like or subscribe and stay to the end because I have a bit of a surprise at the end but let's just get into the pour now and then I can chat about it at the end so I've laid everything into my cup as you can see basically I'm just going to um, flip this over I'm going to put my cup on there and I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to give it a bit of time to drop through. What I am actually going to do while I'm waiting, I did have a bit of paints left over in my cup. So I'm just going to touch up my corners because um, this is, I'm pretty certain this is paint I'm going to tip off at the end. So but I find whenever I do flip cups, this is usually the hardest part is getting my paint to the edges. So I just always um, make sure that I'm, you know, <coughs> getting paint to all of my corners. Uh, so that it just makes it easier when it comes to the flipping. So now I've actually put this cup in the middle of my painting and the reason why I've done that is because if I put it here and then lip, lift off, I, st I run the risk of losing a lot of paint on either side of my canvas here. But And if I lift up here, sometimes I, I it all sort of sits in the middle. So what I'm probably going to do is now I'm just going to move my cup across and um, and then I'm going to start l lifting see and I'm going to lose some paint there it's actually a little bit better than I expected if I'm honest I've got quite a bit of paint left here on the edges so I'm just I'm losing paint here which I'm not enjoying but that said I have got a lot of paint in this on this canvas so I think I'm going to be okay so I'm just again going into those corners trying not to obstruct the view of the camera as well and I'm getting some quite nice cells already without really having to try so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a quick torch. See what comes up anyway. It's interesting. These are definitely not colors I would have normally chosen because I know that uh, orange and blue can sort of create a brown. But I think what's quite nice is the gold, because it's a semi-transparent, it's sitting under some of the colors and creating a shine. Oh, hold on, let me rephrase that. The orange is actually sitting underneath it and that's causing that shimmer, which is really nice. So I wanted to take you in close so you could sort of see. Unfortunately, in this light, the that peach is actually looking it, it, that it's looking quite brown but it's actually quite a sort of peachy orange it's quite a pretty color 
now and i've just let the paint travel and do its own thing i've let it go for a little bit now i'm just going to tip the excess off and i'll show you how we do that so you can see it's actually covered up quite a lot of my canvas already i'm sort of tempted because i've got a bit of runoff i'm actually tempted to stitch colors up to the paint that's already here and then i'm going to just tip the excess off so i'm if you can see i'm just covering up my white patches because this is actually looking really quite nice so i don't want to lose a lot of paint in my tipping um, so i'm just kind of like lifting it up and attaching paint onto the paint that's already on the canvas and then helping it to pour down the canvas if you can see what i mean there is quite a lot of paint on this canvas though, so I do want to move some of it off. Um, you know, I don't want it to be too, because it, it just takes forever to dry. And also in stitching how I'm doing this, I am creating a little bit of muddiness on the edges. So I just want to move some of that off. Um, once I've t touched up all the sides of this painting. Pulling up some paint from here. It's interesting, I think my table isn't actually as level as it used to be. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to look at that. See if I can pull. Oh, that was not a good thing to have done. So I'm definitely going to have to tip off from there. I dropped a blob of muddied colour into there. It's a bit annoying. Gosh, it's actually really nice. Almost don't feel like doing too much tipping, to be honest. I do feel like the nicest parts of this painting are the is actually the blue. So I feel if I do too much tipping, I might lose that. So. I might try and open because I've got some really nice blue sitting under here and there's quite a lot of orange so maybe if I move this way I can sort of pull that blue through and move some of that excess brown off and bring through the pretty blue that I like so I'm just going off on this direction but I'm really conscious of that blue that I've got over there in that far corner because I don't want to lose it if I can help it so I'm just sort of going back and forth gently not too vigorously because I I really want to try and maintain as much of that as I can and I don't want to stretch out these cells too much because they really have formed very nicely so I'm actually quite happy with them. I'm getting quite a big block of white through the top there that I'm not really liking. So I think I'm going to try and move some of that off. But I'm going to move really quickly because if I go too far, I'm going to stretch it and start stretching my cells too much. Which is kind of what I've done. Damn. Yeah, it looks like a galaxy though. It is looking nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my blowtorch to see what blue I can pull through here. If I can pull some more. Because so I can see air bubbles in this. I just want to see what I can pull through. See what I, if there's more I can open out. Otherwise, I don't think I'm going to do too much more. I like how it's ended up, actually. And they're definitely not colours I would ordinarily choose. But I do like how they've come out.
Let me see if I can just get a bit more along here. Let's see if I can pull some more glue through that orange there. Now that's actually nice because what's what that's done is it's it's the white has come up, so it's created a bit of a a, a, a more pronounced peach, which I like. I think it looks good. Definitely quite happy with that. Not what I would have expected. But it's, and, it, and like I say, not colours I ordinarily would use. But it still looks good. I will bring you in for a close-up soon. Uh, and the surprise I talked about at the beginning, I, I have a e-course, acrylic pouring or fluid art for beginners that's on Udemy I will include the link below and if you know if you would like to know about consistencies color choices basically everything that you need to know to get started with acrylic pouring uh, that e-course will get you going <music>